for this presentation. Uh, with me in the room, I have uh, Petri Luxo from Prokman uh, and uh, Michael Eckenberg uh, from Prokman, and I'll let them give a, a more thorough introduction uh, when we come into the presentation a little bit later. Um, uh, so, so we are your hosts this morning. Uh, hopefully, uh, that's going to work okay. So, uh, during this presentation, we're going to ask you to uh, please use the uh, questions option or the chat uh, panel uh, to to ask any questions. We'll do the best to come back to to all of you with all your questions later on, and there will be uh, questions and answers later in this session. Uh, but uh, for now, we will uh, just run through and keep the flow of the the presentation. So, thank you very much for that. Uh, the agenda to, for today is that I will just uh, run you through the uh, introductions here as we are uh, well uh, starting to do and then we will go a little bit through the Autodesk partnership uh, with uh, Procman. Uh, I'll be doing the Autodesk side and um, Petri is going to help us on the, on the Procman side of that. Then I'll give you a little bit of an overview of, of what's happened in the 2017 release of uh, Revit. And Michael will give us an insight into what Magic Hat for Revit looks like and uh, a little bit of, of uh, showing the product. Uh, and then we'll go to a question and answer session uh, for that. The idea is that we will share our ideas and uh, our uh, purpose of this uh, uh, joint venture or partnership and uh, just give you a little bit of insight of uh, of uh, M, uh, how BIM could look like in, in, in the MEP workspace. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, so first of all, uh, I'll just give you a short introduction to the Autodesk uh, Procman partnership. Uh, my name is Thomas Gregerson. I work as a technical specialist at Autodesk. I've been with Autodesk for about 12, 13 years now. I've uh, been in the industry for 25 years. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a trained structural engineer, uh, but been doing the last 10, 15 years in the MEP space. Um, so I'll just start by showing you a, a little video, uh, and hopefully uh, you, you can see this. This is uh, in China. Uh, they are um, building a very high hotel building in, in 15 days, if you see the clock down there in the left corner. And, and you would say, why are you showing us a construction video? We're, we're MEP uh, engineers. But the interesting thing is that the, the contractor here is actually an MEP uh, contractor who's decided that some of their experience can be used to actually uh, create uh, buildings. And I think uh, it's interesting because it's changing the way that uh, buildings are built, where these days we're really seeing a change in, in the way that uh, things are fabricated, and prefabrication is, uh, is one of those uh, areas where we're really seeing a, a, a change coming through. And of course, that's also going to uh, affect us as uh, MEP engineers and, and technicians. The next slide I'm going to share with you is a different example, uh, but almost uh, or just as relevant as, as the first one. This is also a change in production. This is uh, Norwegian architect Snuhetta, who's building the Museum of Modern Art, or has been building uh, in, in, in San Francisco. And the ship shape, or the, 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 the shape of the building is almost like a, a ship's hull. And um, the point here is that the, the, the facade here is made out of, I think it's about 700 individual uh, elements. And because of uh, technologies like uh, 3D printing, or in this case, they've been removing material, uh, this is possible. So the way we do buildings is changing. And of course, that's going to that's going to affect us as uh, MEP engineers and designers and uh, MEP constructors, etc., etc. Et it's going to change the way that we're we're doing business. Just a little uh, inspiration there. So, what is it that we see that is changing? Uh, we see that um, we can now have talent. We can communicate with people across the globe. Um, uh, Technology has made it uh, possible for us today. We're sitting here presenting uh, our view. Uh, from from an office in Norway, 
uh, and we can communicate over vast distances, meaning that we can get access to resources and talent across the globe. We also see that uh, the computer technology gives us opportunities or possibilities to, to visualize or uh, analyze and simulate uh, conditions. There up the top right corner is uh, a picture of how, how light is distributed in a, in a room. Uh, and, 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 and that's giving us the opportunity to, to test things before they're real, uh, make sure that uh, the conditions that we want is met and um, that we're getting to the uh, results that we require. Down on the um, left corner, um, you see a typical example of prefabrication in the MEP space. That we can we can have sort of consoles that we produce in a, a controlled environment and just ship to the construction site and, and put in place and store them there. And on the top right corner, uh, just a, a sort of a inspiration that that the objects that we put into these buildings are becoming more and more intelligent. Uh, we have the next uh, thermostat that is not just controlling the temperature in the room, but is actually learning from uh, from our behavior so that it can control the temperature according to our presence in the room or the activity levels. Uh, and um, increasingly components that we install in our buildings are becoming more and more intelligent and of course we need to take these things into consideration and all of that is truly the concept of what we call BIM. So uh, why are people adopting to BIM? Well, uh, according to certain service, uh, uh, surveys, um, a huge percentage of people transforming into the uh, to, to usage of BIM does that because of uh, driving project costs down, becoming more efficient, uh, seeing uh, uh, improvements to their clients, uh, delivering different things, getting a clear insight into what it is that they're working with, better collaboration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's multiple reasons of moving into to to BIM and um, uh, sustainability being one of them as well. Talked a lot about, and and I think that the point is that when we move and transit uh, change uh, our behavior, we should do that because there is something in it for for us, and it's making us more efficient, makes us produce better results or deliver. Uh, uh, things to our clients that we couldn't be doing do before. So we're changing uh, the world as as we know it. Uh, one of the things that we see is um, uh, customers moving towards BIM is uh, enhanced design capabilities. Uh, basically, that means that as we have more information available uh, uh, through our BIM models, we will enable ourselves to make better and more informed decisions, uh, but it's also enabling us to uh, communicate information uh, downstream into the uh, uh, into fabrication detailing, uh, making fabrication uh, faster and more easy, just like the Chinese uh, skyscraper uh, example. Uh, so we're, we're connecting uh, the various disciplines and enabling everyone to become uh, more and more. Uh, uh, be better at what they're doing. Just yesterday, we saw an example of uh, a, a BIM project being connected to a drilling robot, hanging, putting up hangers for for MEP systems, uh, HVAC systems, uh, and of course, this is also about um, trying to create a a common framework of information so that uh, designers would create the uh, the information that is needed uh, for fabrication and all the way out to uh, facilitating or supporting the uh, uh, the entire supply chain so that the information can be utilized uh, 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 in the uh, maintenance and operations of the buildings as well so it's it's really about changing, not just producing drawings and documentation on how things are built, but leveraging uh, the technologies to become wiser and get a deeper insight into uh, how these buildings will perform before they are built and after they are taken into to operation. So for us as Autodesk to, to achieve this, we, we need uh, various types of uh, strategic partnerships. And uh, the, the partnership that we're here to talk to you about today is the 
the partnership with uh, with uh, Procman and and especially the 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 product of the Magica, because it's it's filling a gap. As you will see, it will provide us with a huge amount of content capabilities that would make it easier to route uh, become uh, being a uh, uh, MEP services engineer uh, and it will uh, uh, plot gaps in 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 the uh, analysis and uh, calculation areas that is very necessary for uh, MEP engineers in 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 the design stage and in the early uh, construction stages uh, with that uh, I'll just gonna um, remind you um, our position at Autodesk. Uh, we started as a company producing um, documentation. AutoCAD was was really a product that uh, was made to uh, produce 2D drawings. It grew a little bit into the, the third dimension but it was really about creating documentation and uh, today we are more moving into what I would call the era of uh, optimization. Uh, we are leveraging the um, the high level of intelligence and information that is is built into the the models today to to make better decisions to uh, be more informed about uh, the the way that we work and uh, the partnership that uh, we are forming now with with Procment is definitely uh, enabling you our customers to make better and and more informed decisions as as we move forward. With that, I'm just going to uh, pass on to to uh, Petri. Thank you, Thomas, for that. So my name is Petri Laakso. I'm a commercial director at Progman, and I'm here a bit to tell you about about Progman, about the Magic App product, and the other products we have in the MEP space before the, and then later. You will see Mikael talk in more detail about Magicat and show some of the good, good parts of it. So indeed, as, as Thomas mentioned, we are now moving into the world of BIM, where it's more where the work is more than just documenting, just creating drawings, but also creating understanding and and, and adding functionality and to the to the drawings, to the or era optimization, as he calls it. A couple of words about Progman, perhaps before we go into the details of the kind of what we can achieve with the partnership, where we are today, so on and so forth. If you are not aware of us, or if you say haven't heard latest news, so we have been always been focused on MEP. So we have about 30 years of experience in the MEP world. We started cooperating with Autodesk. See, already a long time ago, we've been working in AutoCAD area also with Revit, but of course this partnership today that we are talking about enables us together to go even further into helping MEP designers make, make good choices, good designs, good decisions, and to understand the effects of, of, of those in their, in their projects. Today, MagicAd has, we have about 30,000 licenses all over the world in, in over 50 different countries. Most of these actually are even network licenses, so we have roughly 40,000 to 50,000 users for MagicAd globally. In our BIM library, we have about over a million different product models and variants by, 200, by over 200 manufacturers in the MEP space, all of which all of which is the data is, is verified by the manufacturer and comes with rich information not only on the dimensions and the geometry but also on, 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 on behavior and functionalities that can be integrated into the, comp into the calculations that come with the MagicCAD product. Regarding our say, position in the market, kind of the Nordics has also always been where we are based, kind of we come from the Nordics where we have very strong position basically over 90% market share. We also are, are big in, in Russia, very much growing in China, in Central Europe, in Germany, UK, France, Italy, Spain. 
currently we have offices in Finland, in Sweden, in the UK, we also have presence in, in, in for example, Germany, Turkey. Obviously, we are represented in over 30 different countries by our partners and resellers networks. And we have about 120 employees to today. Just showing you very quickly about our history. As mentioned, we started already in the MAP calculation world in 83. We released our first Magic Ad for AutoCAD already in 98. And, and our first version of Magic Ad for Revit in 2009. We are part of, nowadays we are part of Glodan Group. It's the world's fifth largest player in the AEC space. We are, yeah, we, we, last year we reached, let's say, the milestone of, of, of having over one million MMB product in our library and, and other milestones as well. This year we launched out I'll mention a few words about that in, in the next slide, our cloud-based offering for, for, for our product library. We also, this year, we launched our UK office, and then we are seeing good growth, good traction in, for example, the UK. A couple of words about the product portfolio. Obviously, MagicAD for AutoCAD and for Revit is our main product. Today we will be looking at that, that later, what, what that includes. In addition, as mentioned, we launched Magic Cloud, magiccloud.com last year, or this year actually in the, in the early part of this year, where we, where we have our product library browsable, viewable on the internet with, with many, of the, many of the products downloadable, not only for the Magic Ad users, but for any Revit users out there who are not yet Magic Ad customers. In addition to that, we, we work with we work very closely with the manufacturers to to keep to keep up the let's say our product library, but also to provide software and components to them. For example, plugins that allow that allow connection between Magic Ad, Magic Ad and and then let's say the the selection software of the manufacturer for choosing the right products and components for your for your projects, and all of this is is in the MEP. So that really is where our product development, where our focus is. A couple of words: what kind of feedback we get from our customers when we ask them. What is the benefit of Magic Ad? Why would you use Magic Ad? These are basically the statements we are getting from our customers from their from their mouth, how they tell us how they see the benefit. They 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 state that with Magic Ad you can have higher productivity of your MEP engineers, you can reach a better quality of designs, you can do you do much fewer errors, so in general making kind of enabling the engineers to be more efficient and, and the designs to be of better quality. This ends up being, for example, with in the decrease of the of the design project costs, the effort spent on the design project can be decreased by about 30%, for example. The project run through times can be shortened up to 50% because there is less going back and forth, less errors with the productivity tools we have in place that allow you to to draw faster, root faster, with the libraries, product libraries we all, that come with Magic Ad, you'll be able to make kind of start the projects sooner, so on and so forth. And these benefits are obviously coming on top of the benefits that come from moving to BIM, which which Thomas already kind of showed. Then how do we kind of how does Magic Ad achieve this result? You will see this in much more detail a bit later with Mikkel's presentation. But basically, it comes from three different angles. One is that kind of that Magic Ad comes with the largest MEP object library in the world, with over 100, one million products and variants in the MEP world, with from over 200 product manufacturers, with the library being added and grown all the time. All the objects come with fully manufacturer verified 
technical data, as mentioned, not only in the shapes and, and geometries, but also with, with uh, functional data for providing good quality calculations. The calculations, for example, you see for, for HVAC or, and piping on, on, on sizing and balancing or in the electrical side as well. And these can be used directly from your designs in, in MagicAD. And then finally, it comes with, with a lot of highly automated productivity enhancing features that make, that, that make your work as, the, as a MEP engineer much faster and lets you focus on solving the really important problems rather than solving, let's say, drawing issues inside the tool. You will see these also in much more detail a bit later. So to summarize, we, we as, as Autodesk, we fully see the work of the world moving towards BIM with, uh, with a lot of embedded, not only having drawings there, but also with a lot of embedded information that allows you to do better calculations, integrated calculations from the designs to create a bill of material lists, so on and so forth. And by using MagicAd, as part of the as your tool chain on top of your Revit products, you will you will have the access to the world leading tools, the product libraries that really helps you to take BIM technology efficiently, safely into use, and you can start saving time and effort from from basically from the day one. And finally, the cooperation, the, the strategic partnership with with Autodesk's. Autodesk allows us to develop our MagicAD and the whole ecosystem much further by adding even more features and uh, capabilities to the software stacks that will help enable you to work in a more efficient and, and, and easy way. That's all from my part, so now let me sh give, give this back to Thomas. Thank you very much, Petri. Um, I just thought I would spend uh, about 10 minutes uh, just introducing you to uh, Revit 2017 and the MEP stuff that we've been, been working on. Uh, so um, without further delay, basically in 20 15 of 2016, we started uh, working on um, what we would call scalability. For almost as long as I've been with, with Autodesk and we've been uh, developing Revit, uh, we've been every year increasing performance for, for Revit, making Revit faster and more agile. Uh, and uh, just uh, a couple of releases back, we started to realize that it doesn't really matter that Revit is a sports car if it travels in traffic. So we need to we need to understand more about the the the, the data flows that uh, runs inside Revit and understanding how how we can we can make it uh, more scalable and uh, how we can uh, make Revit uh, perform uh, for you as users even even better. So we started to to look at uh, data and um, we started to to look into that. Uh, data that is shared, multiple instances of the same object doesn't necessarily need to be calculated as individual uh, instances. We started to be uh, a lot smarter about the, 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 the things that, that we were uh, using, so things are now calculated in the background, uh, things that uh, is not needed um, uh, is is not calculated, etc., etc., and and in all all in all, it's about uh, scaling and being able to uh, handle uh, uh, more and and more complex and more detailed uh, models uh, within the uh, the Revit environment. Uh, because as I said uh, when we started this morning, we're we're taking Revit out of the design space and moving it into the fabrication space, and and that creates a a, a need for for different models with different uh, uh, level of uh, development, uh, level of detail, etc., etc., uh, to to meet various demands in the 
various different uh, phases of, of uh, uh, a design of, of a given MEP system. So let's have a look in, 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 in the details or in the, in the functions and features that, that we've been added. First of all, We've been doing uh, a lot, uh, it says here Revit Architecture, but uh, it's really um, an insight uh, into how a given building will perform. And we can, we can do these insights, uh, calculate based on a conceptual model with very little detail, or we can start bringing it into to, to more detailed uh, structures and understanding how uh, light will uh, uh, become into this building, how, how temperature, how air will travel, etc., etc. And the idea is that, that we can start getting an insight into how the building would perform at a very, very early state uh, and follow it through the design, uh, making informed decisions uh, rather than decision based upon gut feeling. Uh, and as we move forward into uh, fabrication, uh, that requires us to have the ability to, to create a fabrication model. Uh, and uh, hence that uh, the last couple of uh, releases of Revit has introduced uh, a lot of of fabrication features to, to the Revolut modeling thing. And for this particular release, it's really about making it as, as finished as you can, you can get. So it's about the, the, the nice details, uh, being able to trim, extend, uh, m uh, manipulate the components, swap types, etc., etc., making it easy for users to, to uh, leverage and use the, uh, the fabrication components. Uh, Understanding it fully in detail would be an entire webinar on itself. So just to to let you understand that this is this is the area that we're working in. In this webinar is to uh, not only create a design model, but uh, enabling uh, our users to to bring that design model forward into fabrication uh, and uh, start uh, creating these fabrication models, making the uh, BIM model ready for fabrication uh, and enabling things like the uh, Chinese uh, building going up in 15 days. Uh, but also we've been working a little bit on the uh, electrical uh, side being more efficient, uh, various types of uh, electrical load uh, calculation options. Uh, we're now auto assigning distribution systems, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, uh, we can uh, work with different parameter types, making it a little bit easier to be uh, a Revit user outside the uh, North American uh, geographical area. Uh, but also it's about uh, uh, enabling uh, things, understanding that uh, how the pressure drops after a tap inside a, a, a straight duct, uh, and it's a whole lot about the scalability, enabling that porch uh, in the first slide here to, to navigate in, in traffic. So uh, now um, tedious little things like duplicate marks uh, has been taken out. Um, we are now calculating systems in, in the background. And just to give you uh, a, 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 an idea of, of how that works, and I can see we're a little bit fast here, um, but uh, the idea is that as we start uh, adding docs uh, to a system, uh, the flow uh, in, inside those docs will automatically update and the, the color coding here would show. As Revit starts to calculate in the background, you could see that instead of color coding it, it will give it a hatch pattern, uh, telling me that it's not really ready with the, uh, with the calculation yet. And as Revit becomes ready, it will update the, the, the color code uh, for, for that. With that, uh, very short introductions to where we're taking Revit these days. I'll give the word to Michael Eckenberg and he will uh, give you an insight into Magicat for Revit and, and the wonders of, uh, of, of that application. Uh, thank you very much and I'll just transform to you. Transfer to Thank you for that, Thomas. Uh, I hope you're hearing me well. Uh, my name is Mikael Eckenberg. I'm 
have, uh, I'm the product manager or product development manager for Medicare for Revit and AutoCAD, working with my product management team, um, developing the products, um, handling demands and specification and that stuff. Um, my background is uh, HVAC mechanical engineer. I've been working around 10 years doing real design with uh, as an engineer and project manager. Um, I joined Progman around 96, uh, 1996. I've been hold with um, in the industry for almost 30 years now, uh, working with um, both Medicaid for AutoCAD and Medicaid for Revit. Uh, I will switch uh, to this PowerPoint. And I'm going to do first this PowerPoint presentations, which explains a little bit about Medicaid in in an overview. And after that, I'm going into the real uh, software demo. Uh, sometimes when I meet people, they ask me, what is Medicaid about? What do I need Medicaid for? And then I try to explain it very briefly. It's, it's of course, product databases. That is something that we are kind of famous for, um, because that's something that people tend to need right away when they start working, whether it's AutoCAD or, or Revit. They need uh, databases, manufacturer-specific or generic contents, and they need symbols. That's something that's kind of essential for doing your work. So that is something that comes with, with the Medicaid packages. Um, then what we also have is a lot of routing tools, things that makes your tedious work go faster, uh, remove a routing task and actually being able to, to do your modeling and do your work faster because the time is money as we all know and that, that's where you kind of get your money back. Um, of course, we are living in a BIM world. Um, we draw our models, we do design coordination. Uh, why not calculate? Uh, Medicad is integrated fully into Revit. Uh, and you have the calculation package there according to different uh, localized standards also. If you do a change in the model, of course, you update the calculation. So it's not about drawing something here and calculating something else and then the something model has changed and as soon as you made a change, the calculation is wrong. It's now fully up updated and, and, and aligned on, uh, to the BIM world. Something else that is kind of a big part of Medicaid is our common tools. We haven't been able to figure out uh, uh, proper name for that because BIM or common seems, seems like a little bit what, it, what it's common tools, but I would maybe call it um, BIM tools or a selection of around 20 BIM tools that, that also makes your life uh, much, much easier when you're working uh, with BIM and in Revit. Uh, Medicaid comes, uh, when you install Medicaid in, in sort of merges, in, integrates fully into Revit and you work uh, fully inside Revit with uh, Medicaid um, specific commands or Revit commands uh, fully uh, seamless. So it doesn't matter what you do, there's nothing wrong or doing that. You can work uh, totally integrated. Uh, you have the common tools that we can see here in the center, which is the, on the common tab. And then we have the ventilation, vertical ventilation module. We have the piping, we have the electrical uh, module and also then we have which is now new for this year the support and hangers that um, makes it possible to also handle these type of objects which is quite common and uh, well used in installation as you probably all are aware of. If we go back a little bit to product databases you probably heard by now that we have a lot of products but they are um, very easy then to select and configure and we're going to have a um, deeper down look into that, how you're actually doing it, how you access the models when you're working from inside uh, Magicad. Uh, those models are um, mostly, or many of them are manufacturer specific, but what it also comes with is a huge library for generic contents. Uh, but that type of generic contents can al also contain calculation data. So it's no, not about um, just um, Manufacturer specific product is also about the senior content libraries. And if that wouldn't be enough, there also Medicaid comes with a complementary software for uh, modeling your own product database, creation, uh, creating your um, product databases. It's a fast tool when you can actually reuse any of the ready made uh, families or, or product models and manipulate them, copy them, 
make uh, your own uh, adjustments to them and maybe also add technical data for your calculations. If you look at then after, what happens after I select them and content, you know contents is, tend to be global, you have global manufacturers that are making contents and they probably want to them, sell them all over the world, but what is still a, a kind of standard is that these are symbols because we still produce drawings and, and, and we need the symbols to, to be able to read what it is our contractors need and our, our um, different category of persons that want to have the, the symbol also indicated. With Medicaid you can actually select the, your content library as in, in this case and we have the, uh, this socket here and, and a switch and, and then you can uh, actually then select the, the type of symbol that you would like to add to that one and then you have uh, different type of market area. So you select the market area and, and then after that you get a symbol library and, and you at, attach the, the 2D symbol to your 3D model. Then when you're installing this Medicap comes also with a dynamic interface that is, then adopts the, to the contents depending on what you're installing. You have different support for different type of um, handling depending on the product's characteristic. What is the easiest way to, to handle this product? Uh, routing tools or productivity tools, as I mentioned, uh, some of them we have for ducts, pipes and cable trays and conduits is a kind of a configuration startup dialogues. When you start to draw in this example here, you can see that you can basically take the reference button and inherit information for something that you already drawn. You can then assign a system, select where you want to T-tap, when you want to insulate it and also control all the the offset levels directly from top, center or bottom of an alignment to other components which makes your easy life to coordinate your design work already when you're doing so you can avoid uh, at least the collisions you're uh, uh, that are available to see for the current moment. We have other type of routing tools when actually to draw sometimes when you, you draw your con containment or, or ducts or pipes, you, you tend to have to go up and down and that is and then when we have the, the command it's called angle to horizontal where you actually can use the cell alignment button, clicking on other objects, reading the height levels and, and then actually do your routing up and down, navigating in your model much faster in, in one go sort of. Um, so that are routing settings, vertical routings and then we have standard angle connection tools when you want to connect between different um, pieces uh, and still we make sure that you're doing it with, with the correct angles. We have the crossing tools when you have had this collision and need to fix it out afterwards. It's uh, quite uh, good uh, tools to, to make your modeling work faster. Another type of routing tools is the device connection manager where you're actually going to have a look at to a little bit uh, later where you can basically connect the devices and then uh, select different preferences for how you want it to be routed, all with a preview. If you look at the sewer tool to connection to or drainage connection to the right, uh, it, it comes with different standard options where you can actually route and slope your pipes very convenient from, from uh, the gullies down to your uh, main pipes. We have uh, for electrical something we call symbol organizers, you know that when you place the switches and sockets on the top of, us, of each other and then the symbol might interfere like that way and it's kind of, kind of tedious work to move them around. You can assign them to different parameters trying to control them to the left or right or top. But with a symbol organizer tool you can assign them all and this is the case. We can then move them out in the correct position according to certain preferences. So, so we get nice and proper looking drawings after that. Medicaid also comes with a routing tool for wires. It's a wire tool where you can then uh, draw wires to, according to different presentation standards in different market areas, but you can also handle what is something that we call cable packages, uh, which is a kind of bunch of cables um, or wires that I will come back to a little bit later. Further on, more routing tools, if you're into sprinkler design, you know it's kind of rather many sprinkler had to have to be routed and connected at, at, according to different type of, uh, of 
connection types, you have inline connection and antenna connection or grid networks and, and, and it's quite much work also to route all those pipes. So MediCAD here has also then a sprinkler connection tool where you can connect two, four or twenty or forty sprinkler heads in one go, making some changes to the properties, how you want it to go sideways or upside, if it's branch pipes or main pipes, and then you click OK and, and then you you have all your pipe works routed in one go. And you can also see those uh, missed that on the section and um, sewer connection box where you're also working with those integrated 3D section boxes so you can actually see everything in 2D and 3D at the same time uh, which is quite convenient uh, to, to have a preview of what you're actually doing when you're doing it. If you're into uh, uh, underfloor heating in the coal market areas, we have uh, underfloor heating, could maybe also be used for underfloor cooling if someone would have that need. Basically it routes the pipe according to certain pat patterns, calculates the pressure drops and, and the total circuit length and, and then creates your pipes um, in, inside the floor. Uh, another uh, more routing tools uh, is then what they have called the two pipe routing tools. Uh, you know a lot of components need two pipes and, and draw one, there's some support for that of course, but if you use the two pipe routing tools you can basically connect the pipe and um, to, the, to the main pipes, click on the main pipes, click on the comp uh, device or radiator or chill beam or coil that you want to connect and uh, then MediCAD routes the pipes um, fully automatically to one or many components uh, or products at the same time. time. Calculation, something that I mentioned in the beginning as one of those four areas. We have the duct sizing, um, which makes you si size your duct is according to different pre preferences. Uh, balancing, uh, sound calculation and also sound sp uh, space sound calculation is actually something where you have multiple uh, sound sources or noise sources in the same room, then you can actually space, uh, uh, calculate the resulting sound level in, in that space. If you look at the piping side, we have then high, high, um, the hydronic balancing and also of course sizing for heating and cooling system, domestic water sizing, balancing, uh, sewer flow calculation, and also we have a support for specific heat capacity which is needed and if you want to get your power calculation correct. Of course all this can be printed out in, in, in reports uh, with all the input data and output data uh, collected in, in, in one go there. And that comes also then with um, specific tools for indicating those no, uh, no, node, uh, nodes on the in your model too also, so you can follow the calculation uh, in the model. Uh, sprinkler, uh, sprinkler sizing, sprinkler calculation according to all different standards and uh, you have different settings inside the MediCAD settings tab where you then can actually select the different local market area standard that you prefer to use the calculation according. Here is also what I mentioned about the show node numbers, so you can actually follow the calculation results in to figure out where is that actual part in which you would like to print a document still from your model. Uh, you can also look at this product uh, model of the pump, it seems this is the case of pump, it's the same for fans when we're working with real manufactured product, we actually, actually add the, the capacity of those working products so that actually they know whether they fit or not in your system if you need a different pump or a different air handling unit or a fan. Uh, on electrical side uh, we have those cable package management as I mentioned which is a number of different wires in, in one, usually on top of one cable tray or, or in a conduit or, or something else. Um, will, will the cable management function you can autom automatically uh, calculate the correct supply length since this goes both in, in, in 2D and 3D. They are, uh, you can cal calculate weight and surface area calculations so you have better control of actually where your wires are, where they are going, how long they are. Based on the Revit uh, panel boards we can also uh, generate uh, switchboard schematics according to different uh, local market areas needs where we uh, 
select the Revit panel board because the circuiting is done with normal Revit. You you pick your component or quick equipment and and create a circuit on the panel board. Then you use the MagicCAD tool to generate a switchboard uh, schematic according to the templates. Once that is done, you, you can reorganize your circuits. You can um, <clears throat> assign circuit symbols for those mark there so using that. Um, you can actually create your schematics first inside this uh, schematics uh, uh, before you actually have done it in your Revit model and then when you have the circuits uh, in place you can link them back to the model. You can change wire types, rating in the schematics and then your Revit model is fully updated so they are uh, always in, in sync with the schematic and, and uh, model which makes you of course elim eliminate um, errors. Your documents of the, of the switchboard panel is the same what you actually the circuits that you have drawn on, on your model. So it's also about quality and, and which is something that is important for all of us. Provision for voids or builders work is kind of some, something that is quite um, cost, cost rather much on a construction site. I had numbers that it's like 6% of the whole cost in, in some cases. Uh, and in MediCAD comes with a tool is called provision for voids where you actually can generate what we call then provision for voids which is like a request for a hole. Uh, once that hole is, is generated it can be done manually or it can be done fully automatically for a part of a building or just a couple of ducts or pipes um, according to some settings that comes in the data set which is kind of a set template file that comes to follow us with MediCAD that we're going to have a look at later. You click the, the, the provision for voids tool and it's uh, going create the voids once that is done and that is done by using a linked model then. So once you have done that you, you, you tell the architect or structure engineer maybe in this case um, to link in your model, download a free add-in on our website, install it, it's a two megabyte file size, it's a very small one, run the add-in and then they get a full report on the display where they can follow and monitor every every provision for void request in, in that one they can actually approve or deny um, and if um, you're lucky they might also approve it and then they can cut a hole. Uh, once that is done they can send back a report to the, to the um, MVP designer and he can open the report and he can see which holes are approved, maybe there were some comments that it was approved but you have to move it 500 or, or something else. Then the holes and the provisions are connected, so if the hole is uh, changed or uh, maybe you're doing some sizing, maybe you're moving some ducts so they're not in the same position as that originally was, there's a monitoring function by this report so you get warnings um, if they're not in the same place, different size or actually maybe there's some, some one of the two components that actually have been removed. So this is a tool that handles your kind of workflow for the builder's work. We also have schematics. Someone has been asking us for a long time, why can I draw my schematics since I only want to have Revit, um, but I, I still have to draw schematics. And in MediCAD for Revit, we have a um, schematics tool with localized symbol libraries and, and drafting tool for, for actually creating your schematics inside of Revit. It's also possible to create uh, uh, user symbols. Um, and build up your own symbol libraries. Uh, another tool that uh, can be quite useful since this is about BIM, it's more about information handling, information management, some people also tell, tell some, uh, that it's about. <laughs> um, running index tool is a, some tool that is uh, very much used when it comes to handling list, logistics, numbering, um, operation and then markup systems for, for facility management or logistics reasons. That is one kind of powerful, fully automatic tool that can, can handle all your numbering issues that you might have. Um, in your Revit model you can remove gaps, renumber, change and, and whatever um, it's needed. Um, yeah, quite a powerful file if you want to have the, the numbering done. Uh, Final Replace is another product that uh, is quite uh, very much uh, liked in, in our tool. Basically you can 
find some products, replace them with some other products. But the beauty of this tool is that it actually inherits all the parameters that you have in the previous objects and it also keeps the position and recalculates so it keeps the important position in your modeling work so you don't have to go back um, and change it or update it or move it because you've changed from one one product to, to another one. If it wouldn't be possible, the tool tells you I can replace it but it will not be in identically in the same position as you already replaced the previous product. product. Um, <clears throat> IFC, something that is quite heavily used uh, in the Nordics at least, uh, where people tend to work with both 2x3 and now we have also the IFC4 is coming. Um, and that is something that we have been working actually since 1997. We are IFC 2x3 version 2 certified uh, and we have now implemented also the IFC4, which is kind of ongoing uh, standard change now. Um, when it comes to IFC, it's not about the, the, just the models exchange and that for doing some cooperative work. It's also about information handling in that case also. So Medicaid comes with a built-in property set manager where you actually can define which type of information should follow with that specific object. Um, in some regions, we also start to see those building information uh, manuals where you're supposed to deliver some uh, part of your work in a, s a specific time with a certain set of information, then the property set manager is kind of in, uh, invaluable. You just have to have a tool for, for doing that type of work. Parameters, Revit is uh, full of para parameters. Um, and it's quite powerful things, but you also need to be able to handle all your parameters. With Medicaid comes with a parameter configurator where you can you can set like the target parameter and configure a, a bunch of parameter to to create a new parameter, and that is then done with a parameter configurator and then the parameter manager. So if you want to work with parameter and handle them in an efficient and good way, then the parameter manager configuration is something that you should have a look at. Uh, the reason, the most recent um, module you have is the support and hanger model. It it's kind of comes with in two different versions, and it's all for for hanging your pipe ducts and MAP system uh, fixing that or hanging it up. Of course, uh, it comes with a generic one, which where you're working with different steel tables, and and then you select the the type of steels or rods and beams that you like to work with, or actually. It, configure automatically but we, we are in putting the steel tables there for you to, to, to use. It's fully parametric and it's quite uh, easy to use uh, from that point of view. It's a kind of click and create. You select your duct and then you you, uh, you select the type of support or hanger type you would like to use and then you click on the tray or the duct or pipe uh, or number of, of objects and it's then automatically figure out where the host is, calculates rod lengths or whatever it might be. Um, if the duct is sized or, or something has changed, it auto fully automatically changes or adapts to the new situation. If the slab is moved, if the wall is moved or, or, or the duct or pipes are moved, it's an auto follow functionality, of course not down to certain limitations but uh, and those can also be configured. So it's a very powerful, easy tool to use, I would say. What is maybe the most uh, um, nice feature there also is that you can do the, what we call integrated hangers. So you can make a combination. If you place one hanger and then you realize you have another duct slightly to the left or to the right, uh, which needs your own hanger, you can attach that new hanger to the previous hanger. So you can actually make a great hanger combination with the same kind of technology with a click and create. This one supports now linked MEP objects and also the fabrication parts that, that uh, Thomas was talking a little bit about earlier. Uh, we have, um, um, yeah, uh, sorry, lost the track there. Uh, yeah, so it supports the linked objects and also the linked IFC uh, if you want to use that one. It comes with a boom, uh, uh, a separate BOOM configuration list when you can have the sub parts down to nuts and bolts and very detail specific when you're working with the manufacturer specific uh, component the libraries. Then 
common tools or BIM selection tools that we have. Legend tool for creating a legends for part of the area, whole building, Spedishly export import, three D section box reviewing your your models, clean up of delivery when you're ready with your project, you're about to deliver your files to someone. This tool makes it easy for you to actually clean up, take a remove section, schedules, views, whatever you want to get rid of. Um, sheet manager makes you handle the sheets in an easier and, and nicer way. Um, we have a tag tool since we're using something called subcategories, so you can have different version of, of tags. Um, and, and then a way to handle those tags is basically the, what a tag tool is all about. We have the split segments tool which makes you allow to cut your ductor pipe system into commercial standardized lengths, uh, inserting uh, joints or, or, or couplings between uh, while it goes. Um, dialogs export import, if you're into light design and using the dialogs tool, you can export your spaces into the dialogs tool, do a light calculation, put a select a manufactured product, you lead, get all the lightning data back. It exports all the reflection factors and lightning work plan, etc. when you go into the dialogues and then it takes back the, the um, luminous in the correct position and then you map it to the symbols. You get both the 2D and the 3D geometry into your Revit model. And then finally, also I want to mention a little bit about the BCF manager if you're working with a building called Balleration format, which is something sometimes is, is used to, um, when you're doing design coordination, you get a kind of do your meeting protocol as a as a file. Uh, could be PDF and Excel, of course, but in this case you get a, a picture where you click on, and then you can zoom and find the actual location in your model. So it's easy, very easy to handy when you're about to correct the problem, whatever it was about. So to make a summary of the PowerPoint. Product databases, content, something is needed, also symbols. Routing tools to make your work effective and, and productive. Calculations to verify the design, make sure it's correct and working. And then the common tools to, to support, support your daily life, sort of, as a designer and modeler or engineer. By saying that, I will then move into Revit. Um, I think that was the last slide, last question slide is later. So I will go in here. And I hope you all can see my Revit model now. Okay, good. Um, I will start by giving you a slight overview of the interface. If we go into to the ribbon up, you can see it is now Revit 2017, and, and here you can see the normal Revit commands fully available and usable as you want. If you move on a little bit further to the right, you will find a common tab, and here we have the provision for voids, the, the, the automatic version, the, the manual one. We have the split segment cleanup. IOC export, property set manager, spreadsheet link, BCF manager, schematic drawing, running index, merge, all those tools I was telling you about this it sits on top of this medical common tab. If we move on to the ventilation, we have some common tools that for routing that are same for both electrical and, and ventilation and piping. There's like the 3D section box, the crossing or multi-crossing tools, angled horizontal and our standard connection routing tools that I mentioned for. They are the same and works in the same way for all type of containment or, or segments that you are drawing. We have the duct configuration and duct drawing ducts. We have some things for importing duct series and, and etc. And then we have the install product, which is this two new tool or in product installation that we released in the 2016.4 release. And then we also have the kind of calculate, calculation tools what I'm, what, that I was talking about. Medicare piping, similar things. Um, what we also have is kind of versatile, more calculation options than we have on the, on the piping side. We also have something that's called connection nodes uh, or, or simultaneous different options to support your calculation in a better uh, manner. Electrical side, we have the same. We have the wire tools. We have the uh, different updating functions for cable package and circuit numbers, and we have this, this is, uh, dialogues connection symbol organizers, and then we have the whole uh, switchboard schematic uh, tools. If we go into um, have a quick look about the product selection, we can go into what we call data set. This is kind of the template file for Medicad. And if we move into that one, we can see here you can select your product, so you can set up your 
project standard for what products you actually would like to use. In this case, I have supply grill or supply grill one, two to nine. If I would like to add someone, I basically click new and I can set up my user call or the mark for that one I would like to use. But what I normally do, I go I use the product browser to collect the products from the, the medical library or if you're working with RFR, you select your RFR from this or whatever you, you have this one. In this case, I'm going to the product browser. I select the select button and now I'm in supply grills. So it gives me the databases then um, or list the databases that contains manufacturers that uh, manufactures supply grills. And if we scroll down here, you can see that there are different type of devices and you can go down to the type of grill that you prefer to work with. You, if we move up to here, we can see we can rotate the products and, and we can also put on the measurements so we can see all, all how much space they will take up. We can also take a graphical picture and just have um, that type of, of indication. If I want to select, I, I select this one and then that product comes in, into my sort of data set and then I can also assign what type of airflow um, symbols I would like to, uh, airflow arrows I would like to use for that product. Same in a similar way if we go into piping, we're going to devices and components and you can have a look at maybe zone valve. You can see that there are different zone valves added already here. If you look at those one we can then uh, look at the data set properties and here we can see that there's a well, I've selected here and if I want to select something more, I can use the product browser or switch it to something else and, and, and then I can go down and, and browse. I can of, of course use the search functionality also for, for searching products. And here I can then see different type of products um, and in a similar way that you saw for the product data basis and they can be expanded and have a closer look what it looked like. Uh, moving on down to electrical, same system is also for sewer, skipping that one, going to electrical, maybe to luminaires. Here we can see where we have selected the amount of, of uh, different components and, and uh, where we select symbol libraries, same as for valves, I didn't show that, but in this case I select the market area that they would like to have symbol from. And then I basically go there and say, okay, that is the symbol I'm looking for, or that one, or that one. And then I select OK, and that is then put into this data. So then when the symbol is, is, is done and the family is created, then uh, you have a symbol where you have the, the 3D geometry and the, and the 2D symbol for that purposes. Further on, just to mention very quickly, we have also here for the provision for voids, we have the setting where do you define the offsets around your objects and, and how much space you need between two objects um, before it creates one big hole instead of two separate one, etc., etc. So that is something other like uh, preferences that I'm going to use also. Also, if you go into duct series, you can. Um, sorry, I was looking for the sizing methods. Uh, then we can define different size tables, so we can different uh, max velocity or max pressure drop for for one uh, duct size or, or so on. So there are some certain data and, and, and things that sit within here. If we now have a quick look how we would like to select the product, we go to the install product and then you can see the three options. We have the ventilation, pipe and electrical, depending on which menu or which uh, tab you're working with that is default selected. If you look now into this uh, Solibri grill, you can see the different sizes, you have the preview of the contents, you have the properties, uh, and you also have the data. And here if you write, or I write 30 liters, you can see what is the actual sound power coming from that one, or actually you can click in this diagram and you can see what it is fully open and, and fully closed. Um, um, what is the character is how much pressure drop you can take away, what is the sound um, pressure that it will generate uh, if you will run it with that. So in, in this case you can pre-select probably the correct size that you're going to have. Of course when it comes down to the sound calculation and the, the different condition this is kind of preliminary data but make sure that you're about where you want to go. 
So uh, the same thing goes for if we look at a cooling beam, uh, climate beam, you can also see that that has similar data. We have the preview for cooling beams. We can zoom and check properties and also we have diagram. This one doesn't come with a VCD, so it is basically just uh, pre uh, pressure drop data, but also noise level data on the same level as we have for, for the air terminals. Uh, if you look at the cooling, uh, we can see that we also have additional uh, cooling uh, settings that appears now in the model. So here we have cooling, we have supply air, cooling and return 12. Um, I can estimate the power I would like to use depending on the space and then we also have the specific heat density. And so all that data comes automatically. If you select something else that then have, have maybe heating, well then the heating um, part of the dialog installed so you can select whether this should be installed in 70 or 40 so you can pre-assign that one. Moving on to piping, we go to, to the heating side. Uh, if you want to select a radiator, for example, you can select and load it. And you can also load the products into the product from this place by actually going to the product browser and then it lists up all the radiator uh, manufacturer there. You can see here that I mean, the radiator max, they also come with technical data, so actually they know how much um, heat capacity they have according to different type of, of preferences. So, if I want to have 7040 system, and those re those, those uh, systems is picking up from the Revit model, I want to have a room temperature 21, I want a target power, you can actually select the size according to different uh, criteria. If you want to go narrow search, I can click calculate, and then I can see only those two, those two radiator size fits the conditions, and then you can, can click OK, and that is the one that I would like to, to use. So, and I can see calculated power is then 49 and estimated flow, depending on the delta T is 0, 0 liter per second. Of course, then you can also then set, make your unit setting change. Similar is for, for um, uh, sockets and, and switches and electrical product. You go into the data set and you can uh, select and, and assign them, and then you uh, can install their fire components or security products, different type of cameras, or all the different type of containers that you might have. And as you mentioned, if there's some content you shouldn't find, we also have the magic crate where you can um, basically define your own contents. But I think it's uh, many times there's a lot of contents available here for, for you to use right away. Okay, I think that was enough for the product databases. So we will good, going to have a look at some of the uh, routing tools and I think actually we can go and start with, with uh, one of the, of, uh, go to piping and look at one of the routing tools. Here I have a space, I have two radiators that I just installed already and I have some pipes in my room and now of course I would like to connect those one in, from this case. I can use then the 3D section box or actually I pre-select this one and then I get the 3D section box on the context tab and then I open up this one and then you can see that we have this um, box here and I will just move the roof more down a little bit so it's a little bit more visible that way all the way down. So now we can see um, this is the installation here is our radiators and if we tile the mode now and we go back into can close the other ones down for the moment. That is it, and then we go back, and then I, you can can do this in 3D, and you can do it from top view, so you you can doesn't really matter how you use the tool. Then I go back into the piping and uh, piping tab, and I take the pipe connection, and here I can take one or I can two. Of course, why why should I do one at a time? I can take both at the same time. So I click where is my supply pipe up my return pipe where I want the connection to the main pipe and then I have different settings that if I want the pipes below, top of or so on, if when I want the risers to be um, by the facade or if I want them then certain conditions and, and, and then I just basically click go and then it routes the pipe from the main pipe down to to the, the radiator and, and, and then connect this one there. Uh, yeah, there it is. I was looking for some colored pipes, but that's why I didn't see them. So you can see very easy window, click, click, and then you go, and that's <coughs> routed, and then it's able possible to, to calculate and, and follow. 
Um, okay, we can move on a little bit and also took a look at some some of this. Uh, actually, I have another view prepared for that one. This is, of course, just some examples. Uh, we have here, if we click on that one, uh, we can see there's a gully, and if we look at the properties, we can see this is a gully with a side outlet. If you click in, on the other one, well, this is one with a bottom connection. So there are different, two different type of gullies here. If you also see here, um, sorry, I should disable that one. I just click. Then we can see that the connection in this case actually to, to the to the left, um, and I don't want to connect to that pipe now. That is to the top of in this view. So I can go to the sewer connection tools and I click on this one and I click then on the on the pipe or the sewer tool, and then you can see it cannot connect this one because it's probably trying to the gully is rotated other direction, so I can use this rotate sewer automatically, so you don't have to think about how you place or rotate your gullies when you install them, just yes, place them where they're supposed to be, and then the program takes care of less. Then you have different uh, type of connections, this is a spring connection, plumber connection sort of, uh, that can do pl places dif different type of, of, of bends, or to additional bends, you have the Routing, uh, direct orthogonal or you have the direct one that you can select on. But you can also see if we can set then the slopes, so if I want to do this at 1.5 then I, it recalculates, if I change it to 2 if you keep your eyes up on this part and you see how it automatically rotates and twists and recalculates the bend position and the rotation of the bends depending on the slope that you want to have. Here you can also see where we have this integrated section box and of course this can be expanded if you wanted to see it and even then you can also preview what you are doing in, in 3D now of what you have not different but here's the pipes this is how it's going to be so you have 2D and 3D at the same time if we move on to another routing tool we can maybe go into um, I was thinking about something more here <clears throat> yeah we can have a look at electrical we haven't had that with us and if we go on here, I'm going to show you something what I was talking about, about the cable packages, and we can then turn on this uh, course mode, and you can see that this is the cable package that we are drawing, um, basically the wires that are on top of the cable tray. Here I have my switchboard, and here I have a circuit. I'm going to do this, do this very simplified. This is not circuit, but it's a luminaire. And then I'm going to power that up by using Revit, and I'm selecting the uh, the panel, click on the panel uh, that I want it to be um, circled up to, uh, and that's about it. Then I'll go back into the Medicaid Electrical, and I uh, pick up the uh, wire tool, um, and then I'm going to use just in install so options if I want it to be side, side automatic, curved. These are different options depending on how you prefer your wires to be represented in, in your market area. In this case, I'm just using the, these direct options, and I click here, and then I'm using the floating toolbar and then I'm going to connect directly to the cable package connection. And if you pay attention now, you can see here we have some wires here and um, we also have some wires here. And then I click there and then you will see that it automatically updated. Now I've got another one. I've got a different weight, another square meter area. And if I click on that one, I can also see the length of this, K K uh, length of this um, wire. So um, that was electrical uh, of the wires and, 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 and wire data. Also, uh, we're going to have a look at the symbol organizer tool. Uh, in this case, I placed this one. And uh, for a quick view, you take the 3D section box and, and um, use the temporary view mode here also. And we go down here so we can see what we are working with. Uh, this is a common way. You have a switch and a socket made beside the door. And then the symbol look like this, and of course this is not something that you want by tradition. So then you take the symbol organizer, you take a window of the symbols you want to manage, select the connection point, and then you make some setting for which symbol should be placed most further out from the wall, and which one should maybe stay in place, and then you have some settings for how this should be done, and then it moves and organizes the symbol to the correct way, so you get a nice and proper looking drawing. So, a lot of useful tools also for electrical. We also have the dialogs connection, exporting and importing. Well, I'm not going to go into that. And then we have the schematics point of view. But you are more than welcome to contact any of our, our sales team that we have all over the world, and they can uh, prepare and show you more um, like uh, more than that. We're going to go back into ventilation, and I'm going to show talk a little bit about um, calculations actually. 
So in this case, I'm going to reset this one and put it back into 100 connections. One you draw, you might have drawn. This is a very small, uh, simple example, but just to get you to understand the principles of how it, it's possible to calculate if I'm running a whole big project. It's probably not that easy to follow. So back into MediCAD ventilation tab, and then we go into calculation. We can use sizing, balancing, and some calculation with whichever we want to prefer. In this case, I'm going to start with the sizing option. And then um, we have option to go by network, and then I have sizing methods. These were coming from the data set I was showing you uh, a little bit earlier. And then you have different conditions. If this is rectangular sizing we're doing, uh, well, then we can select some additional data for that one. Uh, max pressure drop 1 PA per meter, click OK and select the duct, and then I have a re report of all the data that I would like to have. And you can see that I have the, the um, 119 liter. I have, um, well, that's a length of some addition. That not so much data from the sizing, actually, but OK, update to the model, and, and then we have an updated model. Uh, if we look here, we can see that we have 28 liters for that one, and we have uh, 20, 35 for that one, and, and the other one we have 28. So there's some different flow rates on, on those devices here. So I want to do balancing about this now. So how will it actually work? If I try to balance, will it work? I have now built-in VCDs in those terminals, so there's some possibility to do some adjustments. I'm going for the balancing. And then you have some options, branch and network, of course, but then how much, what's the minimum pressure drop for flow dampers for air devices, warning limits for high pressure drops, so we don't want to cause any unnecessary energy traps or sound traps. Uh, we can balance to minimum pressure, which is the option I'm going to use now, but we can also balance to given fan pressure, to fan pressure coming for a smarter a uh, smart component, a manufacturer specific component that has built-in data then. Or we can actually balancing according to some uh, predefined sensors. If it doesn't have anything of those, we just want to input the data to that one. I click OK and I select my duct system and then you can see uh, that now I had a little bit more data. This is the kind of route, this is the open end where we started for. And then I have a similar length and uh, flow data, but I also have uh, my pressure drop data, and uh, what is very interesting to see here is that I have the, the adjustment values depending on then the, the, how the, the curve is actually defined. Uh, if I, you can see here, there's a green color. This is the index run. When I clicked on this balance, I didn't show that, but then you also could see that you wanted the index run to be indicated. If I move this aside, you can see that it's all the color indicates with the index run, which is quite good when you're working with adjustment. Um, if we click on this product, they also by direction, as you can click on this one, and you can see where is that product in the printout or in the diagram, so you can actually see and follow and do your analyze here. It can also be done with color coding by using the Revit um, uh, colors uh, tables or color screens, if you prefer that. Colors are very powerful and uh, good to, to visualize things. Uh, if you would like to see now, uh, this one was the fully open. If I right click and can check the product properties and we can see that this is the operating point actually and this is now how much data is going to be generating uh, sound etc if we continue with the sound calculation. Okay, I update that model but I'm going to do uh, some smaller adjustment now. I placed here a fan so if we look at that we can see there's uh, some air handling unit of some kind, and you can also see that it has modeled uh, technical data for the pressure drop curves. So actually, this this air, small air hand, it knows the capacity, it knows uh, how much uh, pressure drop it can can produce, and and actually how much flow it can produce to a certain pressure drop. In this case, I'm going to um, draw the duct, and I just going to connect this one very quick. Oh, sorry, it's connected properly. Uh, draw that one and connect to the other duct here. So then I'm going to do the uh, balancing again. So I'm doing the balancing. Uh, in this case, I'm going to select the balancing to pressure, to fan pressure. I click OK. And then you can see that we have totally different. Now we have about 101 instead of 60 PA. And we have different adjustment values because that is actually what's going to happen in real life. Uh, and also, if you want to see there's still the index run, and if you know, look at the product properties, we can see we have different operating position. Now we can say, this is working, we have the sound levels or we have the pressure drop data, we have secured the system that we are working with. If we want to go on further, we can also do sound calculation of the similar way and then also calculate. And then we have all the pressure drops for the sound calculation, the fan, 
pressed up for octave bands and, and generation attenuation for each component following that. And you can see 35 dB, 39 dB, or 35, whatever it is. And then we can place attenuators uh, or silencers if we think, think that's needed, or maybe there's some other actions that is needed to be done. But um, here we can do the analyze. We are sure about we are doing, how our design is working, and we can model it fast and accurate. Uh, I'm going to round this up when we have also indicated another problem. Uh, I have here a lot of ducts that is colliding actually with another one. I don't see that, but if I go into my 3D section box and we create this one up here, uh, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and we click OK. <clears throat> And we see here that we here we have a kind of a problem that we have ducts crossing at each other. There are different height levels also, and then I unfortunately I have to move those four and not the not, not the big one. So I'm going then going to use the multi crossing tool, and I'm going to use that one in those positions I want to be, and I want to do that one at the same time. So then I go finish and I would like to have 50 mil between, I want to do this with a 45, and then I just pick the top level from that one, and I said OK, and then it takes a couple of seconds, and then we have rerouted the whole system. This is easy, effective, and how fast it can be to work with Revit. And that's the kind of ends my presentation. Maybe